Hello and welcome everybody. This is section four of the notes. And in this section, we will wrap up everything we need to know about kernel density estimation. There are four sections and I will just in each section collect one aspect of kernel density estimation, which we need to consider when using the methods in practice. So what we'll do is we will look at the integrated error that is a leftover from the previous lecture. And then we will consider how should we choose the kernel we saw range of candidates. So we will now set as a question what makes a good kernel. Then we will next consider how should we choose the bandwidth. That is the only parameter in the method. So we need to choose this. But once we have chosen that, we are done. And finally, I will add a bit of discussion of how the method would generalize to higher dimensions. Good. Let's start with the integrated error. So the mean squared error we had in the last section was MSE of f at h of x. And we had the formula for that, ignoring the error terms. We had 1 over nh f of x roughness of k plus 1 quarter second moment of k f double prime of x squared times h to the 4. Good. And the problem we are going to address is that was for estimating the density at a single spot x, whereas in practical applications, one often wants to estimate the whole density function f at many x at once, possibly at all x. And this error, which looks only at one point, is not appropriate for that. So what one uses instead is the integrated mean squared error of just f hat h that does no longer depend on the point x. And that's defined to be the mean squared error of f hat h of x dx. And in theory, there could be different ways of combining the different x. So one could do something like the Euclidean norm, square that thing, integrate and take the square root or approaches like this, but there is really no need for this. The mean squared error is positive. So nothing can cancel in this integral. It's just if there's error anywhere, it contributes to this integral. So I would suggest we just go with this unless there is a special need. So that is over all x minus infinity to plus infinity. And that's the quantity one considers. And there is really not much to that. So what we do is we just integrate the formula I've just written. So we do integral 1 over n h f of x roughness of k plus 1 quarter second moment of k f double prime of x squared times h to the 4 dx. And now the main observation is very many of these terms do not actually depend on x. So 1 over n h can go outside the integral. Roughness of k does not depend on x can go outside the integral. And if you look, actually, the only terms which depend on x are f of x here and f double prime of x here. Nothing else depends on the location. So if I split this integral, I can write 1 over nh outside. Then I have integral f of x dx times roughness of k plus 1 quarter second moment. Here's another bit depending on x. So integral f double prime of x squared dx times h to the 4. And now there are two things we can do. This one here is the integral over the whole space of a probability density. We know probability densities integrate to 1, so that we can just leave out its 1. 1 over nh times the roughness of k. That's the first term. And the integral over f double prime squared dx, there is no such easy rule one can use. One could do partial integration and turn it into something maybe. But instead, what we'll do is we will just misuse a bit the notation about roughness. If you remember what that meant, that was r of k is integral k of x squared dx. So if we are not too pedantic, we can just write roughness of f double prime here, because it is still integral something squared dx. So it has the same form, only we define that for kernels, but we just use the same notation here as a shorthand. So what we get is 1 quarter second moment of k times h to the 4. Good. That 
can now no longer depend on x because we just integrated out the x. And here one can ask exactly the same questions I asked before, namely one can ask for which value of h is that thing minimal and which value do you get at the minimum. And I show you the result in the notes. There is a trick here which is useful to observe, namely if you compare that to the old rules then you see, well you can still glimpse it here, the mean squared error for fixed x had an f of x here. And similarly, the mean squared error for fixed x instead of the roughness of f double prime had an f double prime of x here. So what we can do is we can just reuse the old results and every time we spot an f of x in the old result, we replace it with one. And every time we spot an f double prime of x in the old result, we replace it with roughness of f double prime. And since f of x and f double prime of x in the old minimization were arbitrary value that will go right because we are just solving this problem for the case where these arbitrary values were 1 and r of f double prime. So we can reuse the old result. You don't need to do so the dance with the derivatives again and you get the results I'm showing you in the notes. So have a look, convince yourself you get the same result, but the point is that's very easy. So this was our very short section about the integrated mean squared error. And in the next video coming up right now, we'll discuss how to choose the kernel and that will be based on the formulas we have seen just now. So see you very soon.